everyone. I have a new video today and this is a little bit different from what I've done in the past. I'm taking you along the journey of one of my smaller sewing projects that I'm making for a Christmas present for my partner Tavish. So what I have here are some of the designs for what I'm making. I am making a kind of gothic slash <laughs> sort of emo inspired pleated skirt that you might have found uh, like back in 2009 at Hot Topic uh, with kind of grommet tape and hanging chains uh, kind of coming down the side. So we went through a whole bunch of different design ideas. I made a mock-up of it. I have shipped that mock-up to him. We had, this is kind of the direction that we're going in. It's going to have chains hanging down the side, a pocket in the front um, hanging from some D-rings and little swivel clips. Uh, the yoke of the uh, skirt is cut on the bias. Then there'll be pleats all the way around the outside. And then I think I'm gonna do some kind of like embroidered patch right in the middle of the pocket. So I started cutting this out today. I have made a mock-up of this and fit it to his waist. So this is the waistband pieces. And then here are some of my pocket pieces. Now I have to go out and buy some additional hardware because I do not have the metal circle rings right here. And I don't have little um, uh, chains that I can attach yet. So I'm gonna go out and get that stuff. I also want to line these pockets with some orange lining fabric and I have no orange fabric in my stash, which is very sad. This is all I have for my orange section. And as you can see, I this is like the best thing I have, but this is just cotton. And I think I wanna do something slippery. Uh, so I'm gonna go out to Joann's and get me some lining fabric, hopefully find a couple of these metal rings. If I can't find them there, I'm going to go to Michael's and see what I come up with. And I will see you in the next step. So I went to Auburn Fabric Outlet and I got some pocket lining fabric. This is just a polyester um, lining. And I started working on the front hanging pocket. Now the sketches that I have here are not quite exactly the pocket I ended up making. Uh, it's The one I'm making is similar to this where it's got um, these little pleats in it. But I'm doing um, a pleat on each kind of third of the fabric. So this is gonna be the outside of the pocket and then this is the back side. So I'm going to sew these together, turn them right sides out and then um, do the same thing with the lining and then I will construct the lining uh, inside of this one. Then I'll go in and do some decorative top stitching around the outside and I'm going to insert some little uh, D-rings uh, and um, sew the pocket flap the top half so the pocket flap will be like this and the d-rings are going to come out from here and here so that the pocket will hang from little swivel hooks so what i did for this was i just went in and divided this piece into thirds and then stitched down about an inch in on each side uh, and this just holds that pleat in place so it opens up in the middle so that you know he could put stuff in his pockets and it's not gonna be all huge and bulky. So next up, I'm gonna go in and stitch these um, around four of these sides, well, probably three of these sides, uh, and then turn it inside out and work on getting the lining stitched in. All right, so I have one of the pocket, I have the pocket lining sewn up, and I have this pocket sewn up. So now I'm gonna put the lining inside of this one, right sides together, and I'm gonna stitch around the top edge. I'm gonna leave a little um, section of it open. Holly's helping. Hi. Yes, good job. I'm gonna leave a little area of it open so that I can turn it inside out uh, and stuff it back down. And then uh, I'll slip stitch the top edge of it closed or maybe do a line of top stitching. I'll probably do top stitching since that's a little more utilitarian. Um, and then I'll work on the pocket flap. So I've gone in and sewn the flap to the pocket. So what I did was I, I interface the flap and then I sewed it around four sides and I left a little space open and then I clipped the corners, I turned it inside out and then I top stitched it to the interior of the pocket. So the pocket lining kind of overlaps that finished edge right there and then I just top stitched it down. So then this folds over. I'm probably gonna install a couple of snaps right here so that it keeps it closed. And then I'm gonna go in and take a D-ring and a little bit of this grommet tape and I'm going to top stitch it along the inside of the pocket in the back so that it sticks out the top, kind of like that. And I'll do one on each side here. 
I may need to do a third one in the middle depending on, on how uh, it sits when it's being worn, but definitely at least these two here. And then that's going to hang kind of down from the front edge like this. I'll, um, actually, what I'll probably do is instead of doing these D rings, I'm probably going to do a circle ring and then sew D rings like, like this. And then I can use like one of these guys on the top of the pocket instead. That's probably what I'll do. So I'll uh, update you when I finish the next step. And there's the finished pocket. So I, I think I'm going to end up making some kind of leather patch to go here. Um, and I don't have silver snaps, but I will probably do three silver snaps right in here so that this can open up like that. Um, so to do the little rings on the back, I top stitched it with some zigzag stitches through just the bottom layer. So you can see where the zigzagging is also catching the pocket. So I did this on purpose so that the pocket wouldn't just like flop open on its own. So this provides it a little like closure point right here. So you still have plenty of room to get your hand in and out of there, but this little corner edge is stitched. Uh, and that's just to help with the structure of it too. So there's these jump rings on here. Um, what I'll do is I will put um, a couple of other little pieces of this grommet tape into the seam of the waistband and then do another jump ring here so that it hangs down like this and it can be removed really easily. The, um, there will be pieces of this grommet tape on each side of the waistband and that is going to have a jump ring and that is where the chains will hang from silver swivel hooks. So next up I'm going to work on assembling the waistband. So I need to interface this this is cut on the bias and I have um, cut two of each one so that I have a lining for one section. I'm going to seam them on one side until so I can make it one big piece and then I need to cut out and pleat the bottom half of the skirt. I might leave that for another day uh, but we'll see. So making progress. All right so I have started assembling the waistband. So the first thing that I did was I um, interfaced this fusible hair canvas to the inside of the waistband. I like this because it has some structure to it. It's it's still um, fairly stiff, but it has a nice soft hand to it. So I cut this on the straight of grain so that um, my waistband also wouldn't stretch too much because I did cut this piece on the bias for decorative purposes. Um, and then I went in and stay stitched the top edge and the bottom edge to prevent this fabric from stretching um, in the areas where it wasn't interfaced with the hair canvas. So it's stay stitched across the top and here. And then I took the areas from the pattern where I had marked the placement for the grommet tape. Uh, so this is about um, a third of the way from the center. And I transferred the markings to the inside onto the hair canvas. And then I used long machine basting stitches so that I can see them from the outside. This is gonna help me place the tape later on. And it also gives me a good spot for me to sew in where the D-rings for the pocket are going to go. So the pocket sits right in between the two basting lines. So one is here and one is here. So I'm going to go in and uh, cut a little piece of the grommet tape and stitch in two more rings here and here on the front section. I do not need them for the back section since there's not going to be anything hanging in the back. The only thing that's going to go on the back piece are the um, grommet tape. So that's my next bit and then I'll be ready to go in and start working on the skirt portion. The skirt portion I'm going to just use uh, three giant rectangle panels uh, that are cut the width of the fabric and then I'm going to pleat them up using the pleats. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to pleat them using the plaid itself as a guideline. They're going to be um, pretty big pleats. I want this to be nice and full. Um, and if I need to reduce the width of the fabric, I can do that. Um, but I do want this to be about two inch pleats going all the way around. So I'm going to need a lot of fabric. So I will, um, update you in a little bit. All right. So I, I went ahead a few steps. I went in and created the pleated skirt. Um, I have already done the hem on it. So it's about a one and a half inch hem 
I sewed the top edge and then turned it under and top stitched down. And then I went and attached it to the waistband. So I've already gone in and formed all my pleats. Next step, I need to clean up the seam allowance. I'm going to finish this edge here uh, and then press everything nice and neat. Trim this seam allowance, I have to grade it so that it's different lengths. Press the seam this way. Uh, and then I need to sew an invisible zipper into this side of it. So to do that, I'm going to finish this side edge. I don't, you know, this is the selvage right here, but this selvage is really fluffy. So I'm going to go in and serge it. <clears throat> and then I, all I have to do after that is attach the, um, the grommet tape in here and then sew the lining of the waistband in and that's it. And I'll be able to add the chains and uh, I'll be done. So this is a very fast project, super, super simple, uh, and it's, it's really fun. I'm really liking how it's coming out so far. And that is it. So I went in and added the chains on here. I did indeed have silver snaps, so I went ahead and did a couple of these on either side of the pocket. There is an invisible side zipper here. And then the chains go around and hook up to the back on these hanging bits. I am really happy with how this came out. It was a fun little project. All in all, it took about four hours to make from cutting out fabric to finishing touches. And um, I have enough fabric left over that I might make a waistcoat for myself out of it because I love this fabric. It sewed up really nicely. And I have enough of the lining material left to probably line it as well. So I might put, I might film some video of that. We'll see. Thanks for watching everybody. If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. If you want to see more tutorials, please let me know. Um, if you want to see more of Kali, please let me know. And I will talk to you all in my next video.